Now just remove the other bolt and pull the tensioner completely off and the belt will come right off. Tensioner. Now the belt should have enough slack to come right off of there. Okay, now we're going to remove the timing belt covers here. Um, we loosened our crank pulley earlier, so this bolt should be loose. So pull that out. And then we'll remove the crank pulley. Now sometimes these get stuck in there, they get corroded and rusted in. You'll just have to wiggle them up and down, maybe smack them with a rubber mallet a little bit. Um, this one's not too bad, so once you wiggle it off, pull it off, set it to the side. Um, now, these bolts are all 10 millimeter. There is about four of them here, three of them on this side, um, probably five or six around the perimeter of the center. So just go around, take all these bolts out, set them somewhere, and we'll slide the so covers we have one off. cover off now. We're getting ready to pull this one off. They just slide forward and come out. We've got the top five bolts out, the metal section. The bottom, we need to pull out three or four bolts from the bottom. Once that pulls out, that comes out, we have the whole timing area exposed. Okay, we removed all the bolts from our center cover. What we're going to do now is remove the cover. And we will take the crank bolt that we pulled out and feed it right back into the hole. Put it in nice and snug by hand. Once that's in, we're going to take a 22 millimeter back on our breaker bar and we're going to tighten it, not to tighten the bolt, but to rotate the engine. And what we're looking to do is we have a little white mark I highlighted in white on the crank sprocket. Here, See the small line? Around. We're going to rotate it until that little white mark lines up perfectly with the white mark above. You can see that. There's a small white mark right here. Once those two are aligned, what we're going to do is look over here, and we have a double white mark up top against a single notch. This needs to be a single on a single, so we need to keep rotating it until we get a single to match the single notch. So now, let's see if we got everything lined up. Sometimes it'll take between one to ten more turns. I mean, this doesn't happen every time on the second time, so don't get discouraged. But now we have this white line on the sprocket, the gear, matched with the one above. We have the single mark lined up here to the one above. And a little hard to see, but we have some double lines right here. Those are facing each other. That's where we want them. There's another single one over here that will match the timing cover. It's a little hard to see. We have a mechanics mirror we're going to use. Make sure when we line everything back up later that it's in the right spot. Um, we'll check the same on the other side. The other side should look exactly the same. So, let's take a look here. And we have a single mark on a single mark, and a double mark on a double mark. It's exactly what you need. And here you might see a little better shot. I turn the camera sideways a little bit, but you'll be able to see down here that the single mark on the notch on the cover and the single mark on the lower cam gear is lined up also. Once we've got all that lined up, what we'll do, especially if you're reusing the same belt for whatever reason, maybe you're changing your oil pump or water pump and you're just taking off the timing stuff to put it right back on, is we're going we're gonna to mark these notches. You got the notch here that I've highlighted in white 
and the little white mark on the cam gear. I'm going to draw a line right there so I can reference that if I'm putting the belt back on. I'll do the same thing over here on the crank. So you got the, the line there. Right at that tooth we'll make a white line. And I always put maybe a C or something next to it so you know it's for the crank. So when you line everything back up you know where that one goes. Same deal here. Just a white line centered where those are. So that way when we loosen all this up we know where it goes back on if you're reusing the belt. Okay, next we're going to remove the timing belt guide over the crank sprocket, 10 millimeter. Take those bolts all the way out and remove that cover completely. Once that's removed, we're going to come over here and take our Allen key. Um, we replaced ours with a 5mm socket. It's a little easier to see what we're doing. Uh, but it's a 5mm hex key. And we're going to loosen this guide. We're not going to remove it. We're just going to loosen it to where the guide plate moves. Um, there is a second one below on the cam pulley below on the bottom. A little hard to get to. We're not going to mess with that, but if you have issues putting the belt on where it's in your way and you just can't get it, you might want to loosen the bottom one. But, but make sure you remember to tighten it back up and adjust it correctly or it will shred the belt eventually. So once we've got that loosened, we'll move to the next step. All right, next we're going to remove the timing belt tensioner. Now this is going to loosen the tension on the belt. The cam gears will spin, so keep your fingers free from the belt. Um, you're going to take that all the way out and remove it. Now make sure you still have all your lines marks lined up so that when this thing jolts there's no valve interference at all. There we go. The belt's loosened and the cam gear slips. Now we'll remove the lower idler gear. It's also a 14 millimeter just like the tensioner was. And these things are kind of thread locked in there so they're a little stiff to break loose. Once they break loose they should come right out. Once you've removed this idler you can go ahead and remove the upper idler, the black coil, and you can remove the splined idler which is next to the water pump which is right here. And that's also a 14 millimeter. Once you remove all those, we'll move to the next step. Okay, next we're going to take a 12 millimeter on an extension on a ratchet and we're going to remove this little blue idler. Once that's removed, we can pull the belt off. Now sometimes these belts will get a little bound up on the uh, on the adjustment plates like that. Kind of work it off. Remove the belt. Okay, in today's video, I'm not going to be doing the oil pump or the water pump. Um, I'll quickly and briefly go over it with you. For those that are doing it, it's not too complex. Um, the first thing you'll need to do is remove the crank, uh, the crank bolt, pull this crank sprocket off. It slides straight out. Sometimes they're kind of a bear to get out, but they will come sliding off. Um, after that, remove the 10 millimeter bolts around the entire water pump. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt on the top where the crank position sensor is. Um, that lifts straight out. Once you got the whole thing free and clear, um, if it doesn't just pop right off, use a rubber mallet, something like that. Kind of tap here, uh, maybe pull out on it with a small pry bar, not putting too much pressure on there while you're hammering on it. It should break the seal and the whole thing should slide forward. Uh, once you've got it off, it'll look like this. And uh, what you'll need to do next is clean this entire surface area if it's not already clean on your new one for some reason or if you're reusing one. 
Uh, once that's all cleaned off, um, if you're replacing the crank seal, um, which is the brown seal on the inside of this, this one here, um, lay it in a vise with that opened up. The opening on the vise on the bottom should be about that wide. Place this on top, go around the inside perimeter of this crank seal with a hammer and a screwdriver and evenly tap all the way around it and it'll fall out. Um, to replace it, just flip it over and uh, evenly hammer the new one in place. Don't go too far, make it nice and flush. So, once that's all done or you've got a new pump, you're all ready to put it on, you're going to put a light bead of Permatex Ultra Gray around the perimeter. Don't go too thick. You go too thick, you'll squeeze this on and it'll squish out and you'll get something like this, but a lot thicker on the inside of your pump falling off, breaking off inside of your pump, clogging oil passages. So just be aware of that. So once you've gone around the entire perimeter, I normally smooth it out with my finger, make it nice and flat and even. Uh, line up the notches on the inside. There's the pump notches that rotate. Those have to be squared away with the ones on the crank. Slide this pump on and then go around the perimeter of the uh, pump with each bolt. Thread each one in and I always crisscross. You know, I put one bolt in on one side, one on the other, kind of snug it down, then do top and bottom, snug it down, then go around and do about, I think it's nine pounds. You can't quote me, nine pounds of torque, and uh, make sure they're all evenly tightened. Next to the water pump, it's pretty much just like the oil pump, really. Um, you got your bolts around here, pull all those out, they're a lot longer, but uh, break those loose kind of smack it with a hammer if it's not coming right off. Um, I pull it out with the thermostat on it. So pull that out. Once it's out it'll look like this on the back side. Um, and same deal here. I'm going to go around the perimeter of it if it's one that you're reusing. Make sure it's nice and cleaned up. Same thing on the mating surface on the block. Make sure it's nice and cleaned up. Um, some of these water pumps will come with a gasket and uh, you'll need to put that gasket on there and then bolt it back up. If it doesn't come with a gasket you'll need to use the Permatex Ultra Gray and put a thin bead around there, not too much so it doesn't break off inside obviously. But uh, once that's on there, do the same thing like the oil pump and bolt it back on uh, evenly, crisscross pattern to about nine pounds of torque. Um, like I said, don't quote me on that, you might want to look it up, but I think that's correct. Okay, with our timing belt kit that we order um, the small blue idlers are the same part number, but as I pointed out earlier, the depth is different. This one, the bearing set back a lot further and recessed. This one sets, sets out a lot further. So this is the one that we pulled off the car. As you can see, it sticks out a little bit, and uh, it's at about 15 millimeters is how far it comes out. We put it in this one, and... Uh, comes out a whole lot further. I mean we're looking at uh, 23. So I'm going to shave about 7 millimeters off this bolt. I don't have one on hand. I'm going to put a thread die on there um, so that way when I hacksaw it um, I can take it back off without the threads getting damaged. So if you have this dilemma this is what you need to do. If not, if it's the same as this one you can just bolt it right on with the bolt that it came with. Okay, next up, if you are reusing a tensioner um, instead of replacing it with a new one, what you'll need to do is to take the C-clamp and uh, place the tensioner in the C-clamp. Make sure you keep the tensioner upright when you do this procedure. We don't want any oil to leak out of it, um, out of the piston there. So, you'll put it in a C-clamp just like this and you'll put pressure on it slowly for about I'd say a good 10 minutes for this process so slowly crank it bit by bit over a period of about 10 minutes until this small rod with the hole in it up here is lined up with this hole right here. Once those align you'll be able to take a pin and put it through the center like this or maybe 